Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the interesting data science and analytics interview question series. Uh, what I do in this series is that I answer questions that are kind of confusing to uh, candidates, um, you know, that are not so straightforward. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the candidate just, just freezes when he hears that question. So how do you tackle such questions? All right, so I'll be answering those questions. So if you have uh, such a question that needs answering, please comment below or email me the question. Uh, and if it's tricky or interesting enough, I'll make a video on it and you know, I'll, I'll at the end of the video or at the start of the video, I'll give a shout out of your name. All right, sounds cool. So, here's the question: What is the multicollinearity problem, and how to handle it? So, in this video, we'll be discussing about this particular very interesting question that is asked in an interview. Uh, but hold up, I said that you know questions are not going to be straightforward. So, how will the interviewer going to ask you? All right, Th this is the way that interview interviewer is going to ask you. He's going to say that say you have x and 2x as predictors in the data. Can you predict y using linear regression? This is a multicollinearity problem. Now, why is it a multicollinearity problem? Because you have x and 2x which are multicollinear to each other. They are positively correlated. They can also be negatively correlated. Like you can have x and minus 2x also which will definitely lead to incoherent results or it will give a loss of uh, reliability you know in in the effects of the model all right because you'll get uh, you will get misleading results that's that's for sure if if your if your variables are correlated your prediction will not be accurate so first we need to understand what exactly is multicollinearity so how do you how do you explain this to the interviewer you know this how do you answer this question to the interviewer okay so say that you know i mean the best way to, to first start off uh, this question to the to by explaining to the interview is to use simple English. So in simple English, it's nothing but redundancy in data that is multicollinearity, but uh, that's not you know the most uh, formal way to put it. Uh, if you want a formal definition, after this you can just tell to the interviewer it's nothing but you know when you have two or more predictors in a regression uh, that are highly related to one another. They can be positively correlated, like they can inc one can increase, another can increase, or one can increase, another can decrease. They can be highly negatively correlated also. So, what what do these variables do? They do not provide any unique information, right? They do not provide any different information, right? So, if x1 is changing uh, and x2 is also changing as a result of x1, right? Th it's not. It's. I mean, it's not the same. I mean, it's not something that that's that's you know that's uh, intuitive to 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 a model. So. Uh, this is the best way to explain the multicollinearity problem to an interviewer. So, say you have height and weight as predictors in a regression model. So, although they represent different aspects, uh, both are person sizes. By different aspects, I mean height is measured in inches or centimeters, but weight is measured in kilograms or pounds, right? So, they might sound distinct, but they are uh, highly related to each other because if a person is tall, he's likely to weigh more than a shorter person, right? Uh, and I mean, on an average, you can just forget those fashion models which are there. You know, they are really, uh, you know, outliers in in this in this case. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, th this is uh, one uh, way to explain the problem. Okay, and, and this shows that you know, if you explain it this way, this shows that you actually know what exactly is multicollinearity. So th then, uh, the the next question is how to handle it. So the best way to handle it is to, you know, drop the variables that are causing the multicollinearity, uh, or combine the variables. So uh, this is, I mean, okay, this is this is a good way to tell the interviewer. But uh, you know, wh when you're in model building, when you're in the industry, how do you do that? So you can just say that during model building, uh, you know, you can uh, you have a, lot, uh, a huge data set. Just plot the correlation matrix of the variables and remove the highly correlated variables. Uh, and in case you're running a linear regression model, you can use the regularization methods like L1 and L2 regularization. Uh, you can use this this method when you have slightly higher amount of uh, variables, like your variable volume is high, like you have a lot of columns. But if you have like millions of columns, like you have you know a very very huge data set, like you have a big data, then the most common or most popular method in this case is the principal component analysis method. So what this will do is you know it will uh, I mean, it will remove that component that overemphasizes a particular component in the model. 
all right and this is this is the best way to you know the, this is the best flow the flow which i have explained is the, it's it's the best flow to you know to un, uh, explain the interviewer and he'll be uh, very happy with that uh, you know uh, and this way, if you follow this flow there's no uh, chance of cross questioning you know the that's that's one very uh, uh, you know important thing uh, you can uh, take a note down i mean you will not get any cross questions if you explain it you know in this uh, particular sequence all right so i hope this video was useful to you uh, you know please do support me by subscribing to my channel uh, for any future videos i'll be continuing to make such videos and if you have any questions as i said just uh, leave it in the comments below or if you have any suggestions for any videos do let me know so until next time cheers